All right, what's up, y'all? Matt here again. What's up? I'm back with a bit of a different video for you guys today. Um, something I never really get to talk about on this channel, like ever. Trying to do this whole channel initiative of talking about more things that I'm into. Half-Life is like my other favorite series outside of Kingdom Hearts and Halo those two. With the release of Half-Life Alex being today, and seeing this article right here, I think I just kind of want to talk about it with you guys and kind of explain why Episode 3 slash Half-Life 3 never happened because we do get a full official explanation of what Valve's thinking was behind that and why it just ultimately never happened. A big joke in the game community that Half-Life 3 was never going to happen. And I guess they're like technically wrong because we did get another Half-Life game, but it ain't Half-Life 3 but it's whatever. I'm fine with this because it's at least something, you know what I mean? And I think a lot of people are mad at this because they don't understand how Valve works. I think it comes off the wrong way to some people. I just kind of want to explain what this all means and why this is happening in particular. So let's get into it. So it's summarized in our IGN article right here. They did an interview with Gabe Newell and I, I think some other people at Valve as well to talk about why this never happened. I'm going to a little bit of stuff in here as well, but the main points are summarized right here. They kind of all go around the same um, idea of sorts. Let's go over the points they make here. Reason number one on why Valve never made episode three is the episodic model didn't work for them because they became too ambitious. Yeah, that's Valve. That's Valve for you. Valve is about pushing technology. They're about innovation they're about pushing the envelope and pushing games forward in a new interesting way whether that be through technology or gameplay or s just technical things stuff like that they like to push things forward you know the original half-life redefined how first person shooters work every single first person shooter after half-life kind of follows the model that that game kind of pioneered half-life 2 uh, with the source engine the source engine was a huge revolution and physics technology for games. It was mind blowing at the time and it really pushed technology and games forward for that. All those games do involve Half-Life. Um, you know, they have some other stuff outside of Half-Life that they do push technologies with, like with the Portal games and Left 4 Dead with that AI thing. But you know, the episode model really doesn't push that. It really doesn't go along with their ideals of pushing games forward and being innovative and stuff like that. You know, they really put that as a priority. I think a lot of people are mad at that because it takes a long time for games to come out with Valve. There's even a term for it called Valve time. Even a, there's even a site named after it. And I think that makes a lot of people mad and frustrated with Valve because they try to just do so many ambitious things that can get in the way of games coming out. And it's just so long to wait for Valve games that I guess people just don't even bother and get mad about it. I get that. And it would have been great to see Half-Life 3 come out at all, but I just don't think it would have the same impact that it would have if it didn't push some sort of revolutionary technology. I think it would be underwhelming based on what the previous two games in the series did. And the episodic model, of course, again, doesn't promote that kind of ideology at Valve. So that's why they stopped doing it. It sucks that they had to do it right when the story was about to end and had a cliffhanger going. And I know a lot of people would probably say, oh, why didn't they, they just hold out for one more game and just do the episode through that way? That's just not how Valve works. Valve is a very weird beast, and I do agree that they can be a little bit stingy about it sometimes, but that's who they are, and I think that's what makes their game so great. So, I understand. But a little part of me is mad that we never got episode 3 because they just wanted to be super duper innovative when I just wanted to play a cool game. But I don't think it would have the same impact. That's what I'm saying. Second point here is that they wanted to avoid working on an engine, Source 2, and a game at the same time, again. Yeah, that was a big problem with Half-Life 2. That game, if you don't know, they started developing it right after the original Half-Life came out in 1998 and they developed the source engine alongside that. And that caused a lot of technical problems throughout development and it caused it to be in development for six years. So, you know, they wanted to avoid that because I think they knew that they would have to update the source engine at some point. They're still using it to this very day. It is a robust engine, don't get me wrong. It is a great engine, but man, is it getting old. It's starting to get a little dated, the textures and the look of it, I agree. I don't think the source engine is really needed anymore. And you know, they'd want to avoid that whole thing going on there so 
And finally, for this thing here is Half-Life games are meant to push tech forward. Um, so like I mentioned before, Half-Life games are always the thing that they use to push their new technology. Gold Source Engine and that gameplay stuff with Half-Life 1, Source Engine with Half-Life 2, and for this game, it's VR. VR is their big new initiative in neural interfacing is something else I think they're doing too. Some crazy stuff going on with that. Again, Valve likes to be big, big innovators, so there you go. I knew when they started developing the VR technology with the Vive and the Index that this would be the end result, another Half-Life game, because they always use that stuff to push their new technology. From what I'm hearing, they're more enthusiastic about making games in general now, so I think maybe Half-Life 3 is, and you know, there's a big chance that it will be a VR game, but I think they're going to want to develop it if this is successful, so that's something with right there. Again, he goes into a bit more detail in the article. He says, after working on Half-Life 2 for six years, we decided we didn't want to go dark for so long, and that's why they did that, but it clashed with their ideals of trying to push technology forward for all of their games, and I think they got really frustrated with that. We were never really happy with what we came up with. That's the other thing. This is again into speculation territory, but I'm a big fan of Valve News Network. I watch him a lot. He has his own story of what happened to Half-Life 3 based on what sources have told him inside Valve. And I guess I'll tell that in a quick little summary here. Apparently Half-Life 3 went through three versions of development. <laughs> one was episode three, but they hate the episodic model, so just that. Another one was the game of the Source Engine, but as they said, they don't like not innovating things and just doing another thing. They wouldn't like that, so they scrapped that. But then another version came out with this weird kind of gameplay feature, kind of like the portal gun, but it was weird. He didn't go into detail of what it was, but it was apparently another revolutionary gameplay thing. And it was a very different way to tell the Half-Life story. There was a lot of weird things going on with that. I don't even think Alex was in it. There was a lot of drama going on with that because they had a big disagreement and that ultimately died off. They were never really happy with what they got. Gaming technology has been kind of stagnant over the past few years. Um, not a lot of stuff's happened until VR came along. And now that VR's here, we finally get another Half-Life game. But let me address the other big reason why they probably didn't make Half-Life 3. Steam, obviously. Steam, I think that's the thing that everyone knows because it really didn't give them much of a reason to put games out anymore. They were making so much freaking money with that. Games weren't really needed. Why take a big risk on a game that you don't know if it's gonna be successful when you know that you have this other thing that's very, very successful and is continuing to make you money. Way more money than you would ever make just making games, period. I think that's probably what their thinking was. But I think later on down the line, they used that money to fund their endeavors into VR and tech like that. And I think that's the reason we get a Valve headset in the first place is because all the money they made from Steam, they could fund all their fancy little experiments and, and fun toys, all that kind of stuff. So I think they were distracted with that for a little bit and tried to perfect the technology to make it to where they can make a game out of it. And you know, that game would be Half-Life. I think that was kind of the end goal probably in their minds when they were developing this technology. Okay, when this technology is great, we're gonna make another Half-Life game because he says here again, Half-Life games meant to put technology forward. So the other thing I remember them saying specifically for the development team of the people who make games at Valve is that they were terrified as shit to make these games. How are you going to live up to the expectations of Half-Life 3? The most hyped game of all time. It's a meme in of itself, the wait for it. So nothing even comes close. That is a big amount of pressure to put on someone making a game, you know, even if they made it a more traditional kind of style. And I think that kind of kept people away from joining the team because if you don't know how that works they don't have people specifically assigned to certain games you know employees at valve are allowed to choose whatever game they want to work on they have little swivelly desks that they can choose to work on whatever game they want to yeah they did not swivel their desk over to half-life because they didn't want to get into that mess i think this is a happy compromise having them do a spin-off instead of a full-on Half-Life sequel continuing the story. That's why Half-Life 3 slash Episode 3 never came out. They wanted to push technology forward, but the Episodic model didn't work for that. They never were satisfied with what they came up with. And the Half-Life games, again, are supposed to push tech forward, and they didn't have the stuff to do that at that point, so they just kind of left it alone. That's their ideology at Valve. Also, Steam was just making them so much money, and they were scared that they were gonna mess it up. I think if this game does successfully, which I think it will, at least in the VR space, I think everyone's gonna buy it in that. That is going to lead 
to the development a full proper Half-Life 3. I guess whatever form it takes, whether it be a VR or more traditional game. I think if they made it a VR game, that would be the biggest thing to piss people off ever. So to put it basically, buy this game if you want a Half-Life 3, even if you don't have a VR headset. I can't afford it right now, personally, but I will eventually buy it when I get the chance. Well, make sure to tell me down in the comments below how do you feel about this. Um, are you mad that they never got to release it properly and are you really wanting to see it still are you excited for half-life alex if you're gonna personally play it if you have a vr headset or whatever are you gonna be playing it unlike me <laughs> tell me down in the comments below your opinion also make sure to subscribe and like this video follow me on twitter join the discord server really awesome if you did this has been matt and i'll see you guys in the next one whatever that's gonna be so yeah